Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that goes back in time and kills stupidity's parents. There are people in the Flat Earth world who have let it take over their entire lives. Like the guy in this episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. The owner of the largest Flat Earth group on Facebook and the man who lives in his car and shits in his gas tank for biofuel. Nathan Thompson. A man who is so stupid that... Hold the fuck up, Fight the Flat Earth. Now you know that Nathan Thompson is our dumbass, so why don't you let me take this one because I'm 100%, no, 1000 per, well, maybe 100 million billion percent sure that American Nathan, Nathan Thompson, is the stupidest fucking idiot on earth. Now recently, I went on to Nathan Thompson's show to explain to the Dunning-Kruger specialist and hobby physicist and biochemist and mortarman and sniper and weapons specialist and astrologer and medic and actual expert pamphlet maker, JM Truth TV, that 10 to the negative 17 is not a negative number. But don't worry JM, today's video is for Nathan Thompson. Your video exposing you as a fraud is coming real soon. But during this video, I'm going to try to explain what the Coriolis effect and what a null hypothesis really are. So let's begin. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. So I'm going to look at a video Mr. Thompson did called Globeheads Ask the Same 20 Questions, which he filmed live from his home. Um, his car, his home slash car. Now, warning in advance, there's going to be some next level stupid in this. So have yourself prepared with some kind of face palm protection. Right, let me just prepare myself. Think calming thoughts, calming thoughts. Right, let's do this. No, wait, wait. Okay, go. And some of them are polite, but in their mind, that's what they're trained to think. And then they have the same questions, the same arguments, because you're more likely to spot Bigfoot in nature than you are to find a globe head doing an experiment on the shape of the earth. Am I right? Has anyone ever ran into? Please, I'll send you $100. You send me a video of a globe head you run into randomly in nature that is conducting experiments on the shape of the earth. It does not happen, ever. So... No, it doesn't fucking just happen randomly because normal people don't think the earth is flat like you mouth breathers. So normal people have no reason to go and test the shape of the earth. But you know what I'm doing is help organize a massive joint science project to measure the shape and size of the earth with Project Aristophanes. If you're available on May the 25th and want to be involved, go to this online form and register for the project. I got to list some of the things Globeheads say over and over and over again. And uh, we're going to go through it in true Globehead fashion with my globe. This thing, I was thinking about if I wanted to sell this, what it would charge? Because uh, it's got Rob Skiba signed this, said this is a scam. And I'm, I'm entertaining offers over 500, to be honest. I can use 500 bucks right now, so. Yeah, I'm sure you can. 500 bucks will buy you a lot of flyers to stick under people's windscreens, huh? If you hadn't spent so much of your time spouting this bullshit online, you wouldn't be living in your car. Now, 500 bucks would not be such a big deal. So, so I want, I want to know if the earth was flat, right? Wouldn't it be the sunlight all the time? Be daylight all the time. I mean, I mean, just look right here, right? Got a flat earth map right here. If the sun was out, I mean, well, well, no, that's not, that's not a good example. That's not a good example. Yes, it is a good example because the sun doesn't have a magic lampshade that would only light up certain areas. So the globe heads have a point. No matter how many times you shout perspective, it doesn't matter. If the sun is 3000 miles above our heads, it isn't going to disappear ever. There wouldn't be a sunset or a sunrise. And more importantly, it could never cast a shadow from a mountain on the underside of fucking clouds. 
Next, you gotta explain to me seasons. How would the seasons work on a flat earth? Cause, cause we're on a ball, right? The ball's tilted. Tilted 666 degrees, okay? It's a kawinky dink that is tilted 666 degrees, guys. Kawinky dink, you ever heard of a kawinky dink? Okay, 666 six, six, tilt, okay? So that causes the seasons while the earth goes around the sun. So, so the, the flat earthers need to explain that. Again, it's a good point. The flat earthers do need to explain seasons on a flat earth for me because on our globe, the axle tilt, which is actually 23.5, meaning your 666 is actually 665, is the reason for the seasons because it means certain areas are receiving more energy per square mile than others. In your batshit crazy version of reality, the sun would be traveling faster during different seasons as it travels between the tropics. And this is not what we see in reality. So yeah, please explain seasons on the flat earth for me. And also, if the earth is flat and the sun's just going away from me, how come the sun don't shrink into a tiny little dot, huh? Come on, tells me this, flat earthers. How come the sun don't shrink to a tiny little dot? So let me get this straight. You're doing a video of legitimate questions the Flat Earth needs to address and not providing any answers. Yes, that is another thing the Flat Earth needs to explain because as we see here, both Sean Hufford and Red's Rhetoric have videos showing the sun not changing in angular size throughout the day, which is a problem because as you just very helpfully pointed out, on a flat earth with the sun just moving away from you, it would very much change its angular size. So, also, boats, when they disappear behind the curve, the boats, they go, they go behind the curve, guys. Come on, everybody knows this. I learned this in second grade. So. Yet, yeah, the boats do go behind the curve. Look at this video from Ranty Flat Earth. I've sped it up. He filmed a boat going all the way over the horizon. You know, you guys don't normally make it this easy for me. This is all very confusing with you flat earthers just proving the globe. So, also, you guys gotta tell me why the government will lie to me. I mean, the government loves me, okay? Okay, but it's not just the government that needs to be lying to you, is it? It's every government, every military, Pilot, boat captain, teacher, engineer, scientist, cartographer, news agency, explorer, map maker, globe maker, and ham radio operator in the world that needs to be lying to you. And not one of these people have let the secret up on their deathbed or, or leaked it to the media. I mean, come on, the White House couldn't even keep a blowjob secret. What makes you think that they could keep the flat earth secret? Russia, South Korea, those the enemies, okay? The, the Taliban and the ISIS. Those, the real enemies, the Ooga Booga Man. I don't want to run into them. Oh my God, they got the flip flops in the AKs. I mean, what the actual fuck, man? I'm, I'm speechless. I know it's the first time for everything. So, tell me why my government would lie to me. I mean, I don't care, NASA get $52 million a day. That's not a reason to lie, okay? Nobody lies for money, okay? That's just stupid. Why are you gonna tell a lie just to get $52 million a day, okay? Let's be real. And let me ask you this, Nathan. What do you think NASA does with that money? Do the 18,000 NASA employees just turn up to work each day and party with hookers and blow? No, you pancake-brained, mouth-breathing window licker. They have to pay actual people's salaries to do actual jobs including astronauts and actual rocket scientists. And those satellites, probes and payloads don't build and launch themselves into space. See, all you guys got are the memes and the YouTubes. You got just a bunch of memers, a bunch of YouTubers. Y'all don't do your own research. You need to go back to school, okay? Y yeah, you're right. Who would trust the word of a YouTuber? So, and this, this whole, oh, gravity isn't real thing. Gravity is real. Drop something. Oh my gosh. That is proof positive 
the earth is spinning and things are magically attracted to the center of mass. Guys, come on. Well, you're mixing up two things there. The pen being attracted to the earth is nothing to do with the earth rotating around its own axis once every 24 hours. When I talk about gravity, is that the same thing that you talk about when you say gravity? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And seriously, the sun flat and the moon flat? What's that? You're telling me that burning ball of fire in the sky doesn't have the exact same shape as the planetary Earth we have with humans and animals and plant life and oceans? Man, that ball of fire gotta be the same size as the Earth. It gotta be. That's the only way it goes down. Oh, come on, you dense as smeg fuck nugget. What are you blabbering about now? I thought you were pretending to be a globe earther, but you just said the sun is a burning ball of gas, which is not. It's plasma. And you then said the sun is the same size as the earth. In what model is the sun the same size as the earth? Because in our model, you know, reality, the sun is about 109 times the size of earth. And in your model, well, model isn't really the right word, but... With what you idiots say, the sun is about 30 miles across. In neither of those situations is the sun the same size as the Earth. That Earth don't even matter. I mean, I goes to work, I get off, I get my six pack, I goes home, and I turn on the boob tube, watch some foosball. Okay? That's what matters. You go to work, pay taxes, get your kids in school, make sure they get good grades. Nathan Thompson, you mental midget. If you paid attention at school, you wouldn't be living in your car right now. The mere fact that you are mocking people, thinking getting good grades is important, shows what kind of idiot you are, that you want to stop the education of young minds. You guys don't think we landed on the moon 60 years ago? I mean, come on. 60 years ago, we had the telephones. You go like this. You guys remember those telephones? That's how the president called the man on the moon. He was like, moon, whatever the number for the moon was. And then the lady with the, with the switching lines, she's switching lines, right? She's like, all right, this line goes White House to the moon. Oh my fucking God, seriously. You think Nixon just picked up his phone and popped in the dialing code for the fucking moon? Or you think that we think that? Nathan, have you had a CO2 buildup in that globe? Because your brain isn't working properly. If there is anyone that needs a remedial classroom, it's you. Okay, class, shut the fuck up. Um, I, mean, I mean, please settle down. Okay, today we're going to explain how President Nixon phoned the moon. Yes, what is it, Mr. Truth? You say you disproved the moon landings. And how did you do that? Because you're an expert in photo and video forensics. And you used Photoshop to prove it was all faked. Look, Mr. Truth, Photoshop is not a forensic analysis tool. We've been over this. And stop trying to rewrite my syllabus. I know you say you have a degree in making pamphlets, but it's very hard to read crayon. And your homework needs retyping. I said no comic sans. Okay, some idiots are thinking that the president just dialed the moon. No, the call was set up in advance to Houston. Then, over microwave link between Houston and Washington. Then, out via microwave link to the deep space network. Then up over whichever DSN station had the moon in view at the time via S-band which was picked up by the radio equipment on the lunar lander. Okay, now, I hope that clears that up. Mr. Thompson, did I just see you passing a note to Mr. Truth? Pass it here. What's this then? It says, Mr. Truth, I love you. You are my hero. Oh, isn't that cute? Thank fuck, home time. Get out, you morons. I need a break from the stupid. Over to you, team. How my brain hurts. Getting team is I'm getting the, what we what I call double speak here. I can't get you nailed down on what exactly you believe.
Stop trying to straw man the opposition's position so that it fits your narrative. In this portion of the video, we're discussing Coriolis effect. And if these two dipshits would have shut up for more than three seconds, they would have known what my position was. And this is why I wanted to cover it. Because we have to nail down this term, Team Skeptic. The Coriolis effect is that when something leaves Earth's surface, ipso facto, the Earth rotates underneath the object. Okay. Airplanes, Nathan, bullets, Nathan, me, hot is, air balloons. Wrong, Nathan. That is not what the Coriolis effect is. The Coriolis effect, or Coriolis force, is a fictitious force that exists as objects move from one inertial frame of reference to another in a non-inertial rotating frame of reference. Yeah, that's not confusing, right? So let's define what that means for the average person. Basically, as something moves away from the equator of a rotating object, the increased linear velocity it retained at the equator is conserved as it moves into an area of the Earth that is rotating with a slower linear velocity. This conservation of momentum causes the objects to drift ahead of the original targeted path in the direction of rotation. This is also the reason that when an object moves towards the equator, it retains its slower linear velocity and therefore will appear to drift behind the original targeted path. This effect is subtle, but felt by all objects that leave the Earth's surface. Nathan Thompson doesn't understand Coriolis, but proclaims that he does. But it's ipso facto that Nathan Thompson is a fucking idiot. In the globe model, Okay, if the Earth is rotating, when an object leaves the rotating Earth, it now enters into a secondary reference point and by necessity of the Coriolis effect, must have a secondary reference point and the Earth must rotate under it. Yeah, this is about the stupidest shit I've heard in a long time, as none of that shit makes any actual sense. It's as if someone gave Nathan Thompson one of those word-a-day calendars, and today's word was rotating. But for those of you who aren't fluent in fuckstick, let me translate that for you. Essentially, he said, according to the Coriolis effect, when an object leaves the rotating Earth, an object must have a secondary reference point because the Earth must be rotating because the Earth is rotating. Now, as much as he is trying to bullshit his way through something he doesn't understand, he is actually describing what we see in reality. Thanks, Nathan. You're about to prove rotation. The problem is, and this is why all the globeheads have to double speak and backtrack and don't know what Coriolis is, is because there is no difference in journey times east to west and west to east with airplanes. Earth doesn't rotate under hot air balloons or helicopters or insects or smoke because Earth doesn't rotate. There is no proof that hurricanes are caused by the rotation of the Earth. You're just observing and declaring. So you can't use that as proof. All right. So I guess when a fly jumps up in your car when you're driving at 80 miles per hour and doesn't hit the back window, the car really isn't moving, right? No shithead, because conservation of momentum is a fundamental law of nature and isn't going to change just to appease a bunch of science-denying idiots that think the Earth is flat. The fact that you won't accept conservation of momentum as an explanation doesn't mean that you are scientifically illiterate. It means that you're scientifically brain dead, Nathan, and you would struggle to hold a scientific conversation with a toddler without claiming It's a reification fallacy. You're and Nathan Thompson, you're a fucking idiot. So now let's explain the Coriolis effect in a way that even the enema water that this idiot drinks can understand. Without going into an explanation of what a reference frame is, I'm going to give you a hitchhiker's guide to the Coriolis effect. The following animations describe what is going on in order for the Coriolis force to exist. First, you need to be rotating. Now for me to show this animation the easiest, I broke it down to a two-dimensional representation, where the straight red lines represent different lines of latitude that wrap around the globe, and the blue line represents a line of longitude that connects them. On a rotating sphere, the fastest linear velocities will be at the equator and will gradually slow down as it leaves the equator until it reaches the north and south poles. However, no matter what the linear velocities are at each line of latitude, the angular velocity remains the same. This is why both dots start and end at the same time, even though their lines are different lengths. On Earth, this rotation is 15 degrees per hour. 
Now when an object leaves the Earth's surface at the equator, no matter which direction it travels, it will conserve its original linear velocity and begin traveling with a higher linear speed than the points along the new lines of latitude it crosses. This difference in linear velocity is then translated into a new angular velocity. For example, if an object has an angular velocity of 15 degrees per hour and a linear velocity of 1000 miles per hour at the equator, and it enters into a reference frame where 15 degrees per hour represents only 500 miles per hour, then the relative angular speed of the original object will then increase by 15 degrees per hour over the common latitude, and will begin drifting in the direction of rotation ahead of the intended path due to the conservation of momentum. The exact opposite works when objects begin heading towards the equator, as their lower linear velocities translate into smaller angular velocities as the objects cross new lines of latitude. This graphic shows the nature of the Coriolis effect. The green line represents the path the object wants to take due to the conservation of momentum. The blue line represents a line of longitude that connects the two points at different lines of latitude, represented by yellow circles. We should mainly focus on the window in the bottom right. As you can see, even though the original targeted path is a straight line, the orange circle appears to drift in the direction of rotation and tracks ahead of the intended path. This is the Coriolis effect, which is caused by a fictitious force that is a consequence of moving from one inertial frame to the next in a rotating system. So now that we have covered the Coriolis, let's see how much these idiots can get wrong about the null hypothesis. No, I'm stupid. Oh my. You're, yes, I'm, I'm at that point. Yes, okay. I, you I'll agree with know, you on that. You don't even understand Dude. how to do a null hypothesis. Wait, yeah, I know. No, and team, no, you're no, over here you saying, no, you're, yeah, you are, guys. You, 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 you and I had this conversation, so don't try to act. Hey, I'm gonna mute you for a minute. So JM Truth wants to mute me, huh? Well, it would appear at first that this was unwarranted. However, not everyone knows the behind the scenes. Now unfortunately, I don't have this part recorded, but it is the truth, and it's up to you to decide whether you want to believe me or not. But right before the debate with Sean Hawkins on my channel, JM Truth and I were in a hangout talking and I told him that Nathan Thompson was absolutely wrong about what a null hypothesis is, and this dipshit agreed with me. So when he noticed that I was going to expose Nathan for the ignorant piece of shit he is, he muted me. Now for those of you who don't know or have been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, this is JM Truth, and this is what he said. 10 to the negative 12? Yeah, it would be a negative number. Now normally, I would just correct someone for their misunderstandings, especially in math, and just move on. But JM Truth has been vehemently arguing with people, some within his own community, that 10 to the negative 17 is an actual negative number. Now, I know it's only May, but with the amount of absolute stupidity that has come from this certified fraud, my official nomination for 2019 Dumbfuck of the Year will be JM Truth, aka Mr. Negative Exponents. Oh, here sure. we go, dude. No, oh, the no, negative no, number. Oh, oh yes, God. No, JM Truth, you are a fucking idiot. A no Don't hypothesis. Nathan mm -hmm. is correct. It is. Science 101, you have to manipulate the object to which you are testing. No, JM, and this is why everyone knows by now that you're a fraud. You claim to have a scientific background, that you're a master at the scientific method, and both you and Nathan Dickbreath are both completely lost when it comes to this very basic but essential process of testing your hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis that you test when trying to validate your actual or alternate hypothesis. I know, that doesn't help much either. So let's use a common phrase that you hear within the scientific community. Science doesn't prove anything, it disproves things. So now do you get it? To prove that mass attracts mass, you must first eliminate all other possibilities until you are left with just one explanation that matches reality. So JM, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, actually, technically, he's, I just looked it up. Technically, he's correct. Yeah, I know I'm right, you fucking idiots. Nathan literally screamed this at myself and Godless Engineer on the Non Sequitur show, and he had no fucking clue what he's talking about. What we're arguing actually is, is, a very, is, a very, is a testable variable. You have to be able to manipulate gravity in order to test it. You no. cannot. Dude. No, I'm yes. Wrong. Yes. Wrong. No, Nathan. You're wrong, and you're a fucking idiot. And stop raising your voice to suppress the truth. 
To test f of g equals big G m1 m2 divided by r squared, all you must do is manipulate the variables inside the equation to ensure that they make accurate predictions of reality every time. If we run an experiment with m1 equaling x kilograms and then we swap m1 out for an object that weighs 2x kilograms, then we can make and test a prediction regarding the amount of force that should be felt. This is Scientific Method 101. Marty, I've been dealing with Team Skeptic for six months, okay? Stop lying, Nathan. My first encounter with him was on the Non Sequitur show on April 6, which was less than a month ago from today. Now, I can't tell if he's just a pathological liar or if he's actually that fucking stupid. I mean, who knows? Maybe he's on them good drugs. I know I'm onto something. I've been onto something for three years. Yeah. It's called LSD and STDs. Nathan Thompson, you're a fucking idiot. Now before I close this out and send it back across the pond to fight the flat earth, I have one last clip and one last message for JM Truth. And by the way, by the way, Chief, just so you know, I'm the one that kicked you off, not Nathan. Just so that we're clear. That's, you're, you're that's, I did. That's oh, don't worry, JM. I ain't done with you yet. In fact, you're next, bitch. Now back to you, fight. Well, I think that JM Truth and Nathan Thompson are both going to regret fucking with Team Skeptic. To see the glorious retribution that's coming, make sure you subscribe to Team Skeptic and to our new channel, Science or Satire. Links to both in the description. Now, before my brain melts from the stupid, let's see what other nuggets of idiocracy Nathan Thompson wants to drop on our doorstep. So, I want to know why I can't see forever. Okay, you see my eyes? When I, when I get on the, on the ocean and look from California, I should see Japan, okay? When I'm on the East Coast, when I'm in Jersey, I should look out and I should see Europe. My eyes are strong, guys. I've been using these eyes every day for my entire life as a globehead. They strong eyes. Oh no, you absolute train wreck of a human being, no. The strength of our eyes, I mean, it's obviously gonna be a factor in how far you see because like me, a lot of people actually need glasses to be able to see properly. But that's not really the point here. The fact that we can't see across the oceans is a problem for the flat earther because of this. You say we can't see all the way through the atmosphere, yet you say that we can see the sun and moon, which you say is in our atmosphere and about 3,000 miles away. Yet I can't see New York from Scotland, which is also about 3,000 miles away. You need to explain that. Because my eyes are strong, guys. If you ever see a light in the sky going like this, that's a satellite. They're, satellite. they're like stars, but they're lights. And they go, whoom, like that. And you know they're real, okay? Hey, NASA, yes. Yeah, so I think that Nathan Thompson's on to you about the satellite. Yeah, he, he knows that they're just lights in the sky. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll just give him some bullshit about orbits or something, okay? But anyway, have you got the script for Sleep and Warrior Week yet? Yeah, I want to go on recording that. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm live right now, so I've got to go. Yeah, I, I love you too, NASA. Bye. Well, first off, they're not magically floating. Satellites are in orbit. Now, an orbit means it's falling towards Earth, but its speed is fast enough that it misses and continues to fall around the Earth. I kind of need to lie down. There's, there's just too much stupid here for one video. There's much more of Nathan's video to cover. I mean, he actually hilariously tries to answer some of the questions, but I thought that maybe Team Skeptic and I could cover the rest of that in a live debunk of the rest of his video. Just before we go, I want to say a thank you to my patrons with this. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons. Your support allows me time to focus on my channel and do what's important, bringing you great content and fighting the flat earth. I want to say an extra massive thank you to my $200 patrons, Christopher Kane and Jeffrey Sloan. If you'd like to join and become part of the FTFE team, go to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. And thank you. And that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this destruction of Nathan Thompson, then give this video a like and subscribe and share it on his Facebook group. If you're not already, also subscribe to Team Skeptic and to our new joint channel, Science or Satire. I'll see you soon, and remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight the fight the flat.